Um, I'm just, here's messages that keep coming in. Uh, a, a colleague in Bayer, Christine McCarl, she said, I don't see how this cannot pass. She said, I visited three polling places, and this is in Bayer, your neck of the woods, Navid, and yep. uh, wait lines were over an hour. Oh, I, I saw day. about, I, I counted about 500 people. The, the line was going through the parking lot and there was no more space for cars uh, being parked. And I yeah. heard the same stories uh, from a lot of other people as well in other uh, uh, election site, election uh, polling stations. So granted there were fewer polling places, but um, I don't think anybody's ever seen this kind of turnout. So I, I am so excited to just know how many votes were cast, A, and then to see by what awesome margin we passed this referendum. Right. Because people aren't hearing a lot of negative. They're hearing mostly positive. Right. Mary, I just made you host. Can you, can oh, you see? Can I share my screen? Yeah. People live near the polling places. They get, oh, and um, this message just in says if people live near the polling places, they can see. So, I, you know, they probably don't have a tally because um, uh, anybody who's in line at 8 o'clock is still going to be able to vote. So I'm guessing, because from, from all our reports, there were long lines everywhere, so people probably aren't fully through um, the voting process. But if you were in line by 8 o'clock, then you're going to be allowed to vote. So they probably are still taking votes. That's my guess. Um, so no news um, from anywhere. I actually dropped my absentee ballot to the Department of Elections this morning, and it was super easy. Nobody was there. Um, they just handed my ballot in and they went and scanned it. So we're told that all of the absentee ballots, and we're going to be super curious to hear how many people voted absentee, um, they should all be scanned and ready to go because they were all due by eight o'clock today as well. And it's apparently a very easy process. So we should have some unofficial results within the hour. Um, all right. I, I voted at Glasgow this morning. It's in the cafeteria, which is like a maze to get to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Nothing coming in. All right. So any, any, uh, any takers on, uh, which polling place is going to have the highest turnout? I mean, traditionally, I think Downs has the most votes, right? That may not be the case. Why do you think that may not be the case? Well, because there are lines everywhere. Yeah. I, I don't think, maybe there's not one polling place that's gonna be as dominant as before. How many, how many um, booths, polling booths do they have? Three? Three, yeah, three, three of the things. Yeah. When, huh. when it went, when I was, it wasn't curved that way. It was curved towards the, the side lot. Right. And I was probably like the eighth, we were the eighth group from the front door. And then, yeah. and then it went inside and it went down the hallway and then it wrapped around the gym a couple times. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So. I think the lines have been tremendously long. Yeah. There's still like 75 people in line at Downs. And so, Senator Townsend has joined. Yes, Senator Townsend is with us. Welcome. And um, Hello. Senator Socola is here too. Hi, Senator Socola. So, Hello. what do you think, uh, Senator Townsend? What's going on with the number of uh, people who want to vote. No idea. I mean, I, I saw some posts about it earlier. Um, I voted absentee, so I don't, I don't know what protocols might be causing any kind of additional delay um, or if it's just some kind of massive turnout. 
Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Obviously, there needs to be, you know, take a close look at that and figure out what caused it. Um, and not to, not to mix issues, but right now in, in, down in Georgia and Atlanta, there are like horrifically long lines for voting. So is, you know, was that down there intentional and was up here just some kind of planning snafu? We need to, you know, figure out exactly what went on, what, what, what went on here. So um, our latest information is that there were 8,000 absentee ballots that were requested. And after 8,000, you know, seeing all these lines, uh, none of the polling stations are able to uh, report so far because, you know, there are still people in line. Um, you know, um, I don't know if we're looking at a record turnout. Then it's scroll up. What's your take on that? I think it's unprecedented, so it's hard to say. It's completely unprecedented. Sure is. Anybody else to come? Yeah, I've, I, I'm with you. I've never waited in line, and I've been voting in Delaware for 20 years. And now we didn't wait in line today. We voted absentee, but right. um, my next door neighbor voted at SHU uh, around 11 a.m. and he said the line was about 45 minutes. They had, three they had three machines. He said, unfortunately, there was a, a new voter, a young voter who um, misunderstood the instructions on the machine and put her driver's license into the, to the machine. And it jammed that one for a little while. They were, uh, oh. yeah. So oh. hopefully <laughs> they got that one back up and running. But um, that, so normally, that was, I, yeah. uh, normally uh, there are 30 uh, polling places. So like last year, 2019, there were 30 uh, polling places. And of course, then there were absentee votes. And last year's absentee votes were 19 for the first question and 29 for the second question. Right. So, uh, and the total number of votes, uh, uh, 3,350 and 4,692. So 3,350 plus... 4,692, 8,042 votes. So they were, that was the total number of votes last year. Yeah. And the successful in, in 2016 was around 13,000 total, if I remember, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of parents, when they were advocating on behalf of the referendum, there was all these questions about how do we change this crazy referendum system? Like, so what's, what's the next step? What should we do if either Senator Townsend or Senator Sokola want to give us some advice on how we can help you? Because I know you both want to change this system as well. How do we help legislators move beyond this, this referendum system? Dave, do you want to, Dave, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Well, I've been trying to do it for a while, so maybe you have better ideas than I've had. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, um, I think, I think this time, you know, every once in a while something happens and, and then you have a better shot at getting something done. And there's, you know, we really have to do something. To, now we have a court that has ruled the property tax system that we have unconstitutional. And arguably all we have to do is do a reassessment and, and that fixes that. But I don't think that fixes that. Um, I think there are still some inherent inequities in the system, you have um, some school districts that have beachfront property, and you have some school districts that have other property that may not be owned by people who use the schools and stuff, but they put a lot of money into them, and and so the burden isn't anywhere close to, and and so so a lot of states have put certain properties into a more broad pool, and um, you, you get it out proportionally uh, from from certain types of property. So, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see something like that. That's gonna be hard to, to get through unless we get, um, you know, that critical mass of public support to get it done. So. Yeah, I'll just note that um, Representative Jakes had introduced a bill um, in 2019, May 2019, House Bill 129, that did away with the uh, referendum system for, for basic operating um, expenses and 
he and Representative Paul Bombach were the only House uh, reps to join. Senator Sturgeon, Senator Sokola, Senator Lachman, and myself were the only four senators to join. And I don't think I have ever received as much, as many angry emails, like from my own supporters, like people who know me, people who will put yard signs in their yards for me, like people who have been very supportive of my campaigns were reaching out, expressing frustration, concern, anger. Um, it, it was kind of stunning to me. Um, so I, I think the, the cure for the, the what, what ails Delaware's education system in terms of funding um, is something that I, I just don't know how much the general public uh, really wants to see the cure for, you know, for what, for what ails this. Um, and some of it, you know, can be fixed through the court process and seems to be teed up to be fixed through the court process, but some of it um, might not be able to. And I don't know how you want to break it down, you know, politically, not politically, analytically or policy wise to kind of figure out how much better the system would be if we at least had the rolling reassessments, um, right? Because that would solve some of it. Um, and we might find out, but um, Mary, it looks like you have news of some I sort. I do have some news. So I'm watching the district's spreadsheet and the results are in from Bancroft, um, overwhelmingly in support. So uh, question number one is 231, yes, 37, no. Question Ooh. number two, 235, yes, 30, no. Question number three, 248, yes. 28 no and uh, question number four 238 yes uh, 30 no so that is phenomenal from our first school to report wow awesome. that's great awesome that's not even close <laughs> okay wow. and, I, and I would note that this is a, a city polling location that um, is supporting overwhelmingly two capital components and we haven't had a major capital construction in the city of Wilmington in 35, 40 years. Uh, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. And that, that's, that's a really good sign. And I would hope that we continue to see that trend. Yeah. Uh, Brian, can I ask what rationale did people, did, you, did constituents give you for why they were so opposed to changing the system? Is he there? Senator yeah, he, he just unmuted himself. Oh, okay. Well, that was taking away a level. Yep. Sorry, my apparently my connection is unstable. It says, um, they, they they basically said they it was taking away an important level of accountability. Um, they, they basically viewed it as kind of opening up things like a wild west of of increases in school expenses, and. And look, I think that we know, well, I'm not sure how many people on this call have focused on this over the, over the past few years, but um, Delaware is one of the very few states, very, very few states that have these kinds of referendums um, or referenda. And so, it, so, I mean, Pennsylvania, was it 15 years ago, 20 years ago, um, had, had done away with it? I mean, it can be done. The results are there to show how it works. And I think it just takes an extremely concerted political effort, uh, governor and legislature, to say we are going to do this and we are going fine do like a whole town hall campaign publicly to just engage people and show them but this is one of those situations where it's like you want us to f help fix schools there needs to be major reform to our school funding system um if you really want us to fix it here's how we do it this isn't you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel there's ways of doing this and we just need to i guess go out and earn the support or have the courage to cast the votes um and then get punished for it at the you know election time but know that you did the right thing so it's kind of like a chicken and an egg sort of thing. Like legislators want to respond to their constituents, but at the same time, you guys need to sort of educate and lead. Like that's what I'm saying. Like how can those of us, those parents, mobilize? And I'm sure we could find them across the state. Um, how can we help make that education push to those who don't? There are always going to be those who don't want to lose this right to say no. And I talked to quite a few of them during this campaign. And, and I said, well, what, if, like, why do you think that you should have the right to do this one and not have the same level of accountability for the state? Right. And they're like, well, I, I don't have that, but I have this, I can vote no here. I'm not going to give up the right to vote no on a tax, even though I know I can't vote no on any other tax that comes my way. It makes absolutely no sense. 
but um, there are some sure. people who do it that way. I mean, one yeah, cheeky. One cheeky way to do this would be to introduce a bill that takes away referendums, the referenda, um, but gives voters the right to vote on certain kinds of tax uh, or, or, or expenditures for like business development or something, right? It's like, okay, we'll, we'll swap you, right? We'll give you, we'll give you a vote on certain things but take it away on school funding. I mean, that would be kind of more cheeky than, and not really productive, quite frankly. But I, I think it goes to your point that people like to feel some level of control over, over, over this. Um, right. In terms of other ways to help, I think... You, you basically, if every concerned parent or educator or advocate or whoever would sign up for like, sign up for like a three to five year, um, three to five year commitment to support the legislative effort through like grassroots outreach, knocking on doors, phone calls, et cetera, uh, support the candidates who are willing, or the, or the, the uh, legislators who are willing to sign their names on this or vote yes on this, like sign up to support their campaigns, like go out and knock doors for them. I mean, there's a potential in certain districts in particular for this to result in people losing their seat. I mean, there is a potential for that. Um, so, so I think that's, I mean, that's one way to do it is to say, Hey, I care so much about this. I'm signing up for a three to five year grassroots volunteering commitment to get this done. I mean, that's one way to kind of think about it. Um, you know, it shouldn't require that. I think quite honestly, again, only six legislators put their names on this. Jake's, right. Blombach, Sokola, Sturgeon, Lockman Townsend. Like there should be, you know, triple that at least. I mean, if people want to say they care about solving the school issue. Um, so just get people to, 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 to sign up for it. Um, you know, maybe see how, how, how other stakeholder groups like uh, PTA, like um, DSEA, you know, feel about it. Can it become like a, a part of a candidacy pledge? Um, I mean, there's a lot of ways to talk about this, but I don't know. I don't mean to be, I just don't think, it, you shouldn't have to move mountains as a grassroots electorate to get elected officials to do the right thing. Um, right. And I, I just personally, I mean, maybe this is just, I mean, I'm being unfair to colleagues, but I think the right thing is pretty clear here that we have a very antiquated funding system that needs to be revised. And, you know, I mean, I literally have heard legislators say to the public advocates, like, well, what's your idea for it? You know, show us your idea and we'll tell you if we support it or not. And it's like, wait a minute, we're elected to solve these issues. We're elected to understand these issues. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Mary, changing uh, gears a little bit, wanted yep. to talk about um, uh, these 13 awesome volunteers that we had who did uh, phone banking uh, on behalf of Friends of Christina. Um, and we have one person who alone made 376 calls. One person right here, Rebecca. <laughs> Good job, Rebecca. Awesome. Special prize. <laughs> so thank you. That the was awesome. Is so the list that we had, we actually uh, went uh, over. So we had 115% uh, calls. So some people were contacted multiple times. Okay. Ooh. Thank you. Well, Navid, I was going to say the secret is we got a new puppy. So I'm <laughs> stuck inside and I couldn't go anywhere or do anything. I had to keep my eyes on the puppy. So I thought, you know what I can do? I can phone bank. So that's, that's awesome. What I did. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, of course, um, uh, Andrea, uh, Helga, uh, Caleb, Jack, Nicola, um, Julia, John, Valerie, you know, these are people who all made uh, 30 plus calls. So thank you everyone. Yeah, it was good. I, I was so impressed with all the stories I was hearing about grassroots outreach, like based, uh, that came out of each school community, like every school kind of like rallied and did their own thing. Wow. So are there, what, what areas do we think might have a higher percentage of no votes? So far, it's pretty um, evened out, right? I mean, 70%, 72%, 71%. I mean, the, the area, so we still need to, we, we need to get the votes in from Glasgow, which we're not going to get for a little while because those lines, I think, just finished. Um, Keene and Leisure, those are, you know, that's an area that wasn't terribly supportive. We're pretty sure Newark, two, I don't know, 50-50, I mean, in the past, 
it was maybe a 50 50 chance that it would be um uh positive downs in newark the last time around were some of the only i don't have my my old no oh, here it is no that's not the data from before So the schools that Downs always comes out in favor. Newark was supportive. I think she was too, but close. Everything was close. She was not last time. It was not. Okay. Not and um, Newark was. It was like two sixty five to something, and Newark was, but they had a small, pretty small turnout. In Newark High School last time. Okay. Um, but Downs had 555 yes votes last time to 437 no. And so that was, was the, biggest, the biggest spot overall. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. D Dave, Senator Sicola, have you ever seen such a, a margin of supportive votes for the Christina School District? I have not. <clears throat> So this is pretty, um, uh, you know, 2020 is just turning out to be quite a year. And last time there was 19 yes absentee ballots and 29 no's. Right. Yeah, this time it's gonna be overwhelmingly, um, I'm guessing in favor of the absentees. Uh-oh, we're at 100. What happens? Sorry, what happened? I so said we're at 100 oh, participants. We are. Um, Somebody just noted that um, this is being live broadcast. The Zoom call is being broadcast on first date update. So I didn't know what that meant. So I found it. It's on Facebook being broadcast live. I'm not sure if that was your intention. Um, Our Facebook? This we're no, it, that was that. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know if you want that or not, but at least it's good to yeah, know. Yeah, we can. We should be. Able, hold on. Let me let me figure that out. Let me um, let me put it on live broadcast. Um, we're just reporting the results but they do have 315 people ish that are watching right now live on that first date update facebook page okay well oh somebody else is doing it already yeah somebody yeah so i just wanted you guys to make awesome. sure you awesome <laughs> okay is recording what's live what you're doing she voted 60 cents for the negative. Okay. So I'm going to add another column for 2019. Mm -hmm. Who's first state update? Mary, I'm going to send you a note on Facebook, okay? Okay. okay. All right, so uh, we have a message in the chat box that 2003 was perhaps the last time there was such a strong margin of support. Just grab the Bancroft numbers. Okay, so um, Bayard numbers are coming in. Are you seeing these, Naveed? I am. Okay. They are also supportive. 
David's going to put them up on the spreadsheet. But uh, looks like. Uh, OK, there we go. Mary, you want to read it? Yeah, hold on a sec. Uh, okay, sorry. Messages coming in. Too much going on. Um, all right. So we said we were going to be reporting uh, Bayard. Um, we've got 180 some votes total. Uh, question number one, 135 votes in favor, 46 votes against. Question number two, 131 votes in favor, 47 votes against. Question number three, 138 votes in favor, 40 against. And question number four, 135 in favor, 42 against. So the the margin continues. Margin is actually getting better. So wow. we are now 71% to 29% for question one. 70, 30 remains the same. Uh, Question three, 73 to 27, that has improved. And for question four, 72 to 28, that has also improved. Okay, leisure results are coming in. 574 yeses, 240 noes. 576 yes, 237. And we're still waiting on question three and four. 604 yeses. Wow. And 209. Okay, folks, we are updating it as soon as, <laughs> as soon as uh, anybody else who is counting is, is getting it. Okay. And this is again, one of those uh, locations where um, there were more no votes against votes last time. And you, you can see uh, it's overwhelmingly uh, for this year. Yeah. I just see somebody posting to tell people to go watch First State Update because I guess they're booted out of ours. <laughs> oh. Um, I don't know.
Okay, uh, Marshall. All right, Marshall just came in. No, we had that one. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that. Christiana's coming in. Okay, I see it. Uh, it's a little bit closer in the margin, but it still is in the positive. 695, 516, uh, 516. Wait. 728, 461. So I just got a message here that uh, this is this came in at 925, not too long ago, that they just got the last vote, or, or a voter was just able to vote it down. So this was just about 930. Okay. So this is gonna go on for a little while. It's all cool, it's all good. Tell her Christiana. It's interesting that, um, and when you do your analysis, we'll see it, but uh, Christiana looks like it was much more in favor of the operating, uh, sorry, the capital than the operating. Still no absentee ballot totals. Absentees usually last to come in. It takes a long time. Yeah, but, but we were told that the absentee would be voted um, kind of quickly. You just run it through a scanner. Over 8,000 were, were requested. Wait, how many? That's also for 8,000. Yeah, that's what we heard. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, sorry. You won't let me in, so please give me updated. Okay. Um. Okay, Keen Elementary. 588, yes. 363 no's. All right, I'm responding to all kinds of questions here. Um, back to the Zoom. So Keen is still populating. 588 versus 367. Yep. 610 versus 342. And they're just putting in the last. Okay, 588 versus 367, I'm guessing. Okay, 56. Okay. So we are running about 65% in favor. That's conservative. All right, so who's gonna come in? Well, um, I'm guessing Shu will come in next, maybe? <laughs> Let's see. All ah, right. Uh, 
I just spoke to one of the election officials at Glasgow and she said the results should be up soon. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's looking like a good night. I, I can't, we know Downs is likely to go overwhelmingly in favor. Glasgow, we don't know. Newark, most likely, maybe, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to see how it's going to go, how it can't go really well. I'm going to take a quick pause. I'll be right back. Okay. just posted on Facebook as well. So. Okay, so, so far, 66% um, for the first two questions and then 69% and 67% yeses for question number three and four. So we have four schools left uh, that we are waiting on still reporting. We will update these results as soon as we receive these.
Wow. I have never attended a Zoom meeting that was this quiet. That is some anticipation. I was just saying, I thought maybe my computer froze. Right? <laughs> okay. They first stayed up somebody to play the music again. I guess. Okay. Could you show the bottom row so we can see the totals? Yes. Oh, you can't see it? No, it's, and I keep trying to scroll like it's my computer and that doesn't work. Okay. Mm. Hold on, let me see if I can hide the top ribbon. So you- Spacer rows. If you, yeah. Spacer rows. There you go. Can you see it now? No. No? Okay. Well, I will decrease the size a little bit. I'm just curious because I'm a stat fiend and the number of no's doesn't seem to change. It's always around. 2,500 to 3,000, and it's getting the yes votes to show up. Sorry, say that again? Historically, the number of no's doesn't seem to change. It's the number of yeses that we need when it goes down. It's right. The number of yeses that we get to show up. Right. But, but this time, this time the, diff, the biggest difficulty is that uh, these numbers from last year, they are not applicable because we had 30 um, polling stations last year. No, but if you look at the total number of no's, I'm not oh, talking about- Total the number of no's, okay. We, yeah. I, I think it's your computer, Jennifer. Uh, we're all seeing that bottom row. I see it now. Yeah, I thought I did- um, Yeah, that's yeah. good, thank you. Curious. Okay. You're welcome. We still have Downs, Glasgow, Newark, and Shoe Meadow. Uh, we're still waiting on those results. Uh, we will update those as soon as we receive those. Naveed? Yes, ma'am. What were the results for McClary and, um, oh. Last well, year. Yeah, last year, because those two are probably going to shoe to, to vote. McClary was 133 for 231 against. Okay. And what was the other one? Wilson. Wilson. All the way down. Wilson, 199 for 357 against. So on those notes, um, Pulaski would have gone to Bayard and Palmer would have gone to Bancroft. Mm -hmm. So if you combine those numbers. Okay from 2019 uh, and just to give you an idea right right so i want to so, bring the whole data set here thank you navid you are welcome thank you for bringing it up oh, uh -oh. not that there you go <laughs> so i just heard only two thousand absentee ballots were sent out from district from somebody at district. Okay, so it's possible that those are the ones that are returned. No, that only 2,000 were sent to people. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's correct, just because I've heard numbers closer to 3,000 having been returned. Okay.
So I looked at the 2019 data and just calculated the statistics for the schools that are this year's polling places, and the result is just about the same as when you take all of the schools together. So it's probably somewhat representative, even if you don't group the nearby schools together. Okay. I wasn't grouping nearby schools. I was I wasn't grouping nearby schools. I was just accounting for the schools that had closed and where those students went in the city for our students. Oh, okay. I meant totally because understood what you were doing. That's okay. Well, the first woman was grouping the, the difference in less polling places. Um, in the city of Wilmington, we had three schools that closed and consolidated into Bancroft and Bayard. So the Pulaski that closed would have gone to Bayard and those students went to Bayard and Palmer's students went to Bancroft. I'm back. Okay. Are, are, they, are you still seeing the screen from? Yes, I am. Okay. My son so, just played with my phone and messed okay. it up. So we still have Downs, Glasgow, Newark, and Schumadel to go. And of course, the absentee balance. Yeah. Still waiting on those. What you did. And we are posting these uh, tallies on our Facebook page as well. Um, so if somebody's following there, they can uh, see these numbers as well. And Mary, we had uh, Glasgow is up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're good. You're good. Just looking at the results. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Do we have the results for Glasgow? We won Glasgow. We're looking at the totals now. Okay. We'll update the numbers as soon as we receive those. So Mary, we were talking about this is probably the uh, the quietest Zoom meeting that we have ever been in. Sorry, what's that? I have to go back into that meeting. I said this is the quietest meeting, qu quietest ah! Zoom meeting that we have ever been in. Everybody's doing lots of other things, I'm sure. Okay, now I'm back in the screen. 
Okay. Oops. Okay, we got uh, Delaware online. So when she said Del Glasgow was up, she must have meant at the building. Who told us the re Glasgow results were up? Um, it was somebody who was, I think, there uh, at, at the site. I'm looking at the live tickets for section one. It was 943, 943.4 and... Five, what was the against? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Five. Hang on, we'll add it again. Yep. Well, it sounded encouraging. We'll get the details in just a minute. <laughs> we definitely want it, but we're just waiting for the official numbers to be added up. Okay. I think the numbers are about to be announced. <laughs> so we will update them on our screen as soon as the numbers. Okay, are. section one was 948.4 and And against is 585 for section one. You're talking about Glasgow High, right? Yeah. Yes, we are. So the official results that we are seeing. Oh, they're much lower. Yeah. So we're holding the pattern. Uh, but the numbers are different from what you're reporting. So, no, that doesn't even make sense. I was like, if we added it, if you add them together, it's 996 total. So it's, it's roughly 996 votes cast at Glasgow. Okay. Wait, what else is coming in now? Newark's coming in now. Okay, yeah. Also this, overwhelming. That was Newark, the numbers that you were reading probably. 979 and 340, uh, 349. 969, 359. 975, 352, 975, 345. Okay. May looks pretty convincing to me. And the only two that are left are Downs and Shoe Medell. Well, and the absentee. But the absentee, I of course. Navid, you wrote 915 in the uh, Newark. Question three, yeses. Oh, um, I apologize. That was supposed to be 975. 975. That's what I meant. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pretty resounding vote in support of the district, wouldn't you say? Uh, so far, it's very resounding. That feels good. It feels really good. That a lot of people worked really, really hard for this result. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, thank you to everyone who put in that hard work. Ah, uh, yes, Katie. Oh, so good to hear from you. 
This was a team effort. Really awesome. Yes. Okay, so we have Downs and Schumadel left, and of course the absentees. We're hoping that uh, Department of Elections would be able to post the absentee uh, voter count uh, shortly on their website as well. So we'll we'll continue looking for that information. I guess historically, do they save absentee for last for some reason? Um, I don't know. This is my first time really. Uh, so absentee, you know, vote count this way. Last time we're talking about 19 and 29 votes. Right? Yeah, so, up there this year. so we got to say, though, um, overall turnout is not as high as I thought it was going to be. Um. Why'd you say that? It's uh, almost 8,000 people already that we have counted and there's still absentees, there's downs. True. And Schumann. True. true, true. All three, um, you know, Big those ones. are not, I, I'm not expecting those to be small numbers. They're probably going to be the largest numbers. Yeah. yeah. So I'm expecting it to be probably uh, higher than 12,000. So okay. let's see. So three to come in yet. Three big ones. Three big ones. I don't know. Can we call it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> don't Steve jinx. Kornacki, Steve Kornacki would have called it like an hour ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> don't jinx it. No, we'll wait. We're going to wait till the end because there's just still so much more to figure out. Like, what is the final tally? How much of this was absentee? Um, I don't know. Navid, you're so good at, like, figuring things. What, what polling place – oh, wait, you've already got it worked out? No. Had the um, highest level of support. Can we see that? So far? Um, that's a good question. I can – I can add that. So let's do it. I mean, we know it's not fair to say that that polling place is necessarily support for that school because anyone can vote anywhere. We don't really know who's voting at those spots, but it is just another interesting thing to look at. So that's 86% support, 75%. Kaylee just wrote in here, it's like waiting for Florida and California to come in. That's <laughs> so true. Oh, so we can't do that yet. Yeah, uh, Glasgow's numbers <clears throat> do seem really low to me. <clears throat> Looks like it. Which numbers? Thank you for your votes. Glasgow. I mean, for the for the long, long lines, but I don't know, like, yeah, that's pretty close to uh, almost na almost na uh, uh, one thousand people at Glasgow, almost. Yeah. Hmm. 
So 996 people uh, voted at uh, Glasgow High. Ah. So uh, Kim is saying here that at 4.30, she uh, was told that there were 1,100 votes that had been cast. It is possible because uh, some people, uh, you know, they may, they may answer first question or second question and not the third and fourth question and things like that. So total number of uh, ballots cast could be 1,100. It's just that we, we have 606 yeses to question one and 390 no's. So, you know, this 606 and 602 may not be the exact same people. There may be people who have not even answered this question. Right. So, so that's where the difference may come from. So that's not a, that's not an unusual difference. It's also possible, Naveed, that um, there were say three machines and this is only to count from two of them. If, if there really were 1100 votes by earlier in the day. Right. Okay. Okay. Downs is reporting 1000 yeses. 1006. 347 no's. Wow. Nine hundred and ninety yeses to question number two. Oops. Monica. Three hundred and sixty-three no's. Welcome, Monica. One was messed up. Okay. Um nine hundred and ninety-nine. Yeah. <laughs> Yay downs. Oh, I'm glad that um that monk is not here otherwise he would have fought to make it an even 1000 <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm i'm guessing downs is the most favorable well i don't know bancroft looks pretty good yep Did I say Bancroft? Yeah, no K, yeah. And Downs has an E. N-E, yeah, there you go. All right, so getting closer and our number's at the bottom. We're still keeping a pretty good 70-30, rounding a little bit. I can do that. This is, this is, this is amazing. I can recall having, well, you know, the last decade, um, the two that passed were by a handful of votes. I'm very excited to hear about the absentees. Like oh, yeah. absentee ballots are reporting. 2,567 yeses, 982 noes. Oh. One. Okay. We can call it now, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think we can. 24. Uh, move your mouse. I can't read it <clears throat> from the other screen oh yeah 24 7 something yeah six i think okay we'll we'll fix it if it needs fixing One, five or six 72, i think 2712 841 2549 and 905 oh it looks like she's coming in now too Wow. Okay. Congratulations, folks. Yeah. So I do think this 
turnout is gonna um, surpass the last one, which was, what was what, 13? Somebody posted it in the chat not too long ago. 13.2 or something like that. All right, she's coming in. The last of the results are being reported. Yep, so, so far, um, based on question number one, there are 13,303 votes. So we know there may be, the total number of vote cast would be higher than that. So 719 versus, was it 617? And 716 versus 612. Yeah. Um, 766, 573, 732, 586. Okay. Here we go. The results are in. That's more than wow. two thirds. Yep. Across the board. This is amazing. Well done. Maybe uh, on question three for Shu, you said 573 against, but you wrote 873 against. So oh. just thank you very much, sir. That was 573. There you go. See, my, my hands are my, and my mouth don't sync up something. <laughs> Uh, the board has got to um, follow what they said they were going to do. Yep. Yep. All right. Let me just take a snip. This makes tomorrow night's board, me board meeting. Oh, it's going to be a fun. A lot happier. Yeah. That will be fun. Wow. I mean, this is, this is so exciting. It's not the same as if we were all in the same room, though, right? Like that our, our collective energies would just sort of be be uh, screaming at each other. It's a little hard. Uh, it's a little colder over Zoom. Okay. Can we have a little virtual champagne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll bring it to the board meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I read somewhere that they uh, more people report working uh drinking at work these days because you're like on zoom and you can do all kinds of things when all right so this is i have a snapshot of this we can share this this is super exciting okay Very cool wow so lots of um lots of good things well we're already doing good some good things but now but, we need to we need to continue moving Yes. In the next direction. Um, this is good because we have a strategic plan that we need to start planning for. Um, new leadership coming in, and we need to be. I want to keep connecting with the public even more. Yep. So, yes. I've been already thinking about ways of doing that and things that some different issues I think have been um, kind of fallen you know, the way we do things when you see the same budget report every month, you know what you're talking about because you've been seeing it every month. But I kind of want to think, let's do things assuming there are new people paying attention. I think that's something that's been missed. So we'll see. Yeah, we were talking earlier too, Monica, about, um, well, just the need to, to maintain this level of engagement with the community, right? This was this was truly a, an all hands on deck. Everybody got out. There was a lot of mobilizing, a lot of communicating with parents and communities. That has to continue really 24-7. It shouldn't just be for a referendum campaign. So that's something. But also mobilizing this energy. And I think a lot of the parents who worked really hard and realized just how frustrating the system is, how do we turn this into the movement that can help legislators who want to change this system, change the system. So um, I, I would like to see energy put into that. I mean, I, I would definitely put time into that. Okay. So I'd like to I second have a question. 
because uh, we have a couple of legislators on. Yeah. And if I'm speaking out of turn, please go ahead and correct me because, you know, I've been on the board for two weeks, um, maybe two and a half. Uh, and so one of the things I think actually helped to get people more engaged was the ability to be part of the conversation via Zoom. And I want to figure out how do we continue giving that opportunity to people who can't physically come to meetings? What, I mean, obviously there are logistics. I don't know what the laws are. I, I want to move into the 21st century. I want to follow also the reason we have laws is to um, keep things from being done in secret. And, but I think we also need to recognize that the a lot of things can be done over or inclusive and so how we become more inclusive and so i don't know what why certain rules are certain ways and whether or not that's a policy that needs to be changed or a law that needs to be changed so that's one thing i want to think about this summer so that we're back when we are back in tradition more traditional meetings we can still engage the people who cannot come to those meetings so that's kind of my thought on that the new york city council started um live streaming their meetings you could do the same for the school board meetings and then people can at least watch if not participate okay so there's no rule against doing that i doubt that yeah uh, there's a lot of different rules for school board meetings versus <laughs> I know these are rules it, it feels. I know these are rules that you can't live stream it. The issue would be is whether or not you make it a virtual meeting where people could more interactively participate, ask questions, et cetera. But Senator Sicola, I know that Monica had, had kind of addressed the two of us. Do you want to give quick thoughts first? No, there we go. Senator Sokola? Yes. So I wasn't sure if you, would, if you had any specific thoughts in response to, um, to Monica asking about state legislators. And, I, I, and Monica, correct me if I'm wrong, was it specifically with, with regard to the issue of virtual meetings? Or, yeah, or virtually, like live streaming, but also is there a way to, to allow people to have public, to give public comment in some ways? The live stream is great. Um, where they can see what's going on. So if we can do that, that's probably the easiest thing to set up. But letting people, Resound. now they sign up and they can give public comment versus over Zoom. Is there a way that we could have that as the beginning section during public comment so people could do that? Do we need to get creative? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I just know that this engagement, how do we keep it? So the last two years, we've had two of the most unique experiences with elections that I've ever uh, been around for. And, and one was a school board election where we knew the person was going to have to resign if she won. And this year was um, a referendum during a pandemic. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. there was a critical mass of people who are committed to openness, transparency, and inclusion at, 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 and to a fault. And, and, and it, it was so refreshing to see the overwhelming, what I thought right thing to do <laughs> was done. And, and I, I think that sends a really good message. If we can, if we can continue that kind of engagement, um, we're gonna make our schools that much better and the community is going to be all behind it. And I, I just really feel that uh, those two, I mean, they were so out of the box and, and the results were so refreshing. Yeah. Um, so I was texting with Governor Carney a few minutes ago and, and sort of shared the, it might've been the pre Mary pre Navid official call of the results, but I'm sure <laughs> that, that it was going to win, it was going to pass pretty overwhelmingly. And he was, um, I'll, 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 I'll skip the parts where he was saying very short, you know, responses with exclamation marks he was very excited um, but then I asked if he, wanted me, if he wanted me to share any thoughts and he said yes this is a real win for the children and a new day for the district with a new superintendent and this vote of commitment 
the district has our full support for all their efforts with particular support for students who need the help the most. Um, so we know that at the state level, there have been conversations in the recent year or two trying to do a better job of having officially weighted, you know, different funding or supplemental funding that achieves the same kind of result. Um, and we also know, though, that with the pandemic, the revenues from the state have taken a, a huge hit. We hope the recovery is quick. Um, but I, I, I very much want to echo the point about especially supporting students who need the most support. Um, and we'll have to see what that looks like, not only in the current budget, but also in the next year or two, hopefully a smooth recovery. Hopefully a smooth you know, rollout in the fall with the start of school, although we, none of us know exactly what it's going to look like at all. Um, I also just want to echo the engagement. I just, I really, I, I, I plead with board members. I mean, tonight was a great result, obviously. Thank you to all those who, who, who pitched in and made sure this happened. Um, you know, state senators and state reps appear at neighborhood meetings all the time. I would highly encourage school, school board members to do the same. Um, work out a rotation schedule or whatever. I just think the community having access to you and having you answer questions about where things stand will go a long way on a going basis to having um, not just parents, but, but voters throughout the district have that good impression of the district. Say, oh, I remember when that person came out and answered my question. I know they're accessible. I want to go ahead and support them. I, I also would emphasize, as I said, that I know with the pandemic, it's like, you know, campaigning and social interactions are obviously curtailed heavily. So whenever it can be started again, just door knocking, I mean, knocking on someone's door and asking them for their opinion be long before, months or years before you need their vote is so critical to them feeling that you really actually care about them, that you're not just waiting to the last minute to ask them for their support. Um, you know, by the way, whatever everyone did tonight, I would say obviously works. So that's an important caveat. But, but I think just, again, building those relationships um, at a time before you need their vote is, is just a fundamental respect in democracy. Um, that I think that we, I really encourage everyone to do on this call. If you're taking the time to be on this call, I'm sure it means you're willing to take the time to campaign. Um, and like I said, I, I mean, in the, this week, it's the second time I've used, or third time I've used this example, but like an elderly veteran who maybe wants to know about the ROTC program or someone who played a school instrument, you know, decades ago, who wants to know what's going on now, it's just a very legitimate way of connecting people to the schools now. And uh, I would just highly encourage that. And I would love to door knock and, um, you know, do that with, with anyone who's doing it. Um, so, uh, very much congrats to everybody, uh, and, and, um, just, it's just a wonderful night for the district. Um, and Brian, I would like to particularly thank you for all your advice throughout the process. You know, um, sometimes, um, uh, a, a heart to heart conversation, uh, uh, you know, a, a critique, uh, of the, of the mistakes, you know, that is also very important. And I think. Uh, that has been with us throughout the process, and we have learned a great deal from it. Uh, and I hope that the school district will also continue to learn from from the past experiences. Thank you. Always happy to to have those caring conversations. Uh, uh, same to you, uh, Senator Scola. You know, you've been uh, you've been a very good friend of uh, uh, of Christina School District. I, I don't think you have missed any meetings uh, ever since we started earlier this year, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think you've been, you have attended every single meeting. So thank you so much. Uh, you know, it means a lot. Um, and we are seeing the fruits uh, of that labor. Uh, you know, of course, our effort is just, just uh, a small effort uh, as part of this huge uh, group of people, uh, staff, uh, board members, uh, volunteers, parents, students, teachers, uh, but but we are very happy that you are part of it, uh, and we can learn from your advice. Yeah, I, I want to echo Navid. Uh, the uh, all of the legislators that we have reached out to who represent Christina have been amazingly supportive and engaged and interested, and um, I'm 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 looking forward to to continuing to to build the relationship and really just build this district to be the best in the state. It Absolutely. can't be. It can it happen. Can be. Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Somebody has to be. Why Nobody not? Nobody I can't. That's my plan. Yep. We're yeah. die trying. Messages coming in from everywhere. Like, woo! Congratulations messages flooding in from everywhere. It's very fun. It's great. It it it's um it just it it's such an amazingly wonderful result and we knew i think we knew it was going to do well i had no idea it was going to do this well i got to be honest yeah. i did not expect that it would be 
this resoundingly supportive. So this is just, I'm gonna have to sleep on this and digest it. And I'll probably be jumping around in the morning because it's just mm -hmm. still sinking in. Well, um, yeah. Mary and Naveed, I'm sorry, but I have to say thank you so much for your leadership and coalescing all of us together, rooting, cheering, pushing, moving us all and helping um, to be the best cheerleader, marching band, grandstand um, possible to make sure that our children, our um, CSB family um, have what they need to be successful. So I thank you both for all the hard work. Thank you. Thank well, you. Yeah. I'll also like to remind um, and remember Rebecca and Andrea's uh, hard work, uh, Helga, you know, uh, you guys did an amazing job. Thank you very much for making all those uh, calls. Uh, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. There were so many people who did a lot of hard work. I mean, we, Absolutely. we mm -hmm. kind of maybe just helped coordinate, but um, lot, lots of, lots of really committed parents and community members. And so this, this was really definitely a team effort. Totally a team effort. It's great. Feels so good. Right? I see I see Diane's name, but it's not Diane in the picture. Though. Yeah, hey, hey, it's Kevin actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if Senator Townsend, Brian, if you're still on, but you know, I asked that question in the chat, but you know, it is you you mentioned the the budget, you know, the post pandemic, you know, recovery and the budget specifically and you know, I'm happy to email you and, and talk about that via email, but you know, in the larger group here, I don't know if you were you know, if you had anything you might be able to share, you know, I, that, that, you know, that, that experience, you know, is stuck in my head. You know, we worked really hard in 2016 and got that referendum passed. And then, you know, shortly thereafter, the, the, the state budget came out and we lost a lot of funding. So, you know, we, this was a great win, but, you know, I, I worry, you know, that we, you know, have that in our future. Sure, yeah, our timing um, of referendums is not awesome. <laughs> I certainly invite um, Senator Sakola to, to comment too, if he if he wants to. I'll, I'll note, um, I'll answer that question, and I have a quick thought that isn't necessarily the happiest, but I want to convey it on behalf of constituents who certainly have legitimate questions of the district um, about a separate topic. So yeah, on the budget, uh, J the Joint Finance Committee um, finished up, kind of preliminarily finished up uh, part of the budget. Um, I guess was it last last week? Um, there's one more revenue estimate committee meeting that comes out next next week, and then the budget will be finalized. So it's still, it's not a final budget yet. Um, but as I said in the response to you, I'm happy to get the detailed description of what has happened on the education funding side of it and email to you or tell, or email to Focus. I'm happy to just distribute that widely. I just don't know the detail right now. Um, so, so I don't have that. Um, I do believe on the capital side, I was texting with the budget director a few minutes ago, I think, and, and Dave Sicola is chair of the capital budget committee. I'm pretty sure that with the, this passing tonight, the capital side is funded. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So I'll invite you know, Senator Sicola in just a second here to, to give any thoughts on that as well. But I'm not trying to play hide the ball. I just don't have the information in terms of the budget and what, you know, the details regarding education. I'll get that for you ASAP. I also will note that if the revenue estimates next week are higher, like if there's been enough of an economic recovery so far, and God knows the stock market doesn't track the real economy for most Americans, but, you know, there's been this odd, you know, kind of recovery sort of in ways, including jobs numbers. Um, if there's more money than expected, then things would start getting filled in. Um, so again, it's very fluid right now, but send me an email. I'll get back to you with details and I'll ask Focus to distribute it widely too. Um, real quick, another thing I'll say though, with the, with the fourth question tonight passing with regard to money for Christiana High, among others, I do have a lot of constituents who legitimately ask the question, what is the district's plan for high school consolidation? Um, and it seems like the numbers here, I'm looking at the screen, it seems like people didn't vote no on question number four, particularly higher amounts at all. Um, but I do know some people who said, why are we going to be putting millions of dollars into Christiana High School if legitimately it looks like there should be consolidation of high schools? So I just, again, I asked the board members to please develop specific plans on how to address these issues. I, maybe I'm incorrect, but I'm of, the, I'm of the understanding that the numbers suggest that Christiana just need, sorry, that Christina needs two high schools, not three. So if we could find ways of trying to get to the optimal ASAP, it would obviously free up even more resources to, to plow into the schools that we, you know, that we, that we need um, for the benefit of students. So I just, while I have the mic, so to speak, I just wanted to put a plug in for the many constituents have the legitimate question of why do we still not have a consolidation plan? Um, 
uh, for for the district. Um, that said, I've you know Senator Sakola, if you if you want to jump in, or, or I know Monica looks like you might want to say something as a new board member. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm um, still learning the ropes. <laughs> Before, before uh, uh, Senator Scola and uh, Monica, you go in, I wanted to remind that some, <clears throat> some folks have joined in now uh, because they were not able to join in before. So for their benefit, I would like to um, go over the results. Um, the election, uh, the referendum results were a resounding success. Uh, we have overwhelming support, 68% yeses. 32% uh, no to the first question, 67% yes, 33% no to the second, 70% yes, 30% no uh, to question number three, uh, and 69 to 31 uh, support for question number four. Now this is uh, uh, coming out <clears throat> on the heel, heels of uh, 2019 where there was a 57% uh, against vote uh, for uh, for the referendum in 2019. So comparatively speaking, this is a huge improvement uh, in community support um, and and uh, definitely a very good night for the school district. Uh, Senator Scola. Yeah, so um, there, there have been a couple of times uh, and in recent history, there was one uh, around 2017 where we did not fully fund the capital share for Appaquinamink. Uh, and, and it was because they had such an ambitious building program with a referendum that passed that, um, and, and it was such a bad fiscal year for Delaware, but they did have uh, sufficient local funds to go with the state funds that we did give them uh, to do what was shovel ready for that year and, and you know we, we we worked together and then then the very next year we leveled up with them and gave them the rest um today our triple a bond rating was reaffirmed uh by uh the 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 bond rating agencies and the total interest cost is a record low 0 0.79 percent so there's there's a lot of things that point in a good direction if if chris christiana if the christina school district has um capital or minor capital stuff that is shovel ready to be done, I'm pretty sure we will be able to do the entire state share. Um, as of um, our last uh, uh, conference call with uh, the budget people, um, they were very confident that anything that had passed already, plus if Christine has passed, we would be able to, to fully fund uh, in, in this year's bond bill. The three worst years we've had were obviously the 2008-2009 the uh, uh, crash, 2016, which is more recent, and this year. But the one difference this time is we had a reserve fund and, um, and, and that was able to help cushion things a little bit. It wasn't enough to, to cover everything because this was so dramatic, but, um, but it's something that, uh, that meant a lot to the bond rating agencies and uh, and I think uh, it's going to help us getting back uh, to where we need to be. But, uh, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Tomorrow is the first uh, meeting of, um, uh, of, for the budget, right? The capital budget write up. And uh, next week, after the final Financial Advisory Council revenue estimates, we're going to be able to put all the final numbers and, and details together. But I'm, I'm very encouraged we'll be able to do this. Thank you, Senator Scola. That was awesome. Monica? Uh, I'm excited. I'm hoping people stay engaged. I'm hoping people follow up, come to board meetings, email your board representatives and tell them, hey, this is what we expected. Are you doing that? Um, I, I need to be held accountable. I need to be reminded. There's a ton of stuff. Um, but I also want people to recognize that, uh, and this is a, something that I have learn slowly but surely and I'm still, I'm still learning. Um, the life that I lead in the school district, in, especially years ago, was a very small piece of the puzzle. And decisions that are made that seem very inconvenient for me or, or how could they do that, that seems stupid. Um, when you take a step back, uh, there's more pieces to the puzzle. And so yes, it may not be the best thing for me or my child or it's most inconvenient, but it turns out it's really important for other people's child 
and the alternative is much worse for somebody else's child. Um, and that's what started me getting involved is when something just didn't feel right. The district has com um, committees. Get on the committees. If you're not happy with the way the calendar is, get on the calendar committee. Um, not not thrilled with engagement, then um, you know get an engagement committee. Expect the the district has all kinds of committees. So let's make sure that you're engaged. Um, I got on the finance committee ten years ago because people were talking about how mismanaged the school district was, and I said, all right, let's figure out what's going on. And I got onto the finance committee and I started paying attention and learning things and to be honest no respect no disrespect to our current members from the state but the mismanagement starts way above school district funding issues are state level problems um so but get involved and keep up with the the board come to meetings let's figure out how we can live stream so people know what's going on Thank you, Monica. Uh -uh. Um, yeah. Mary, what's the plan? Um, I'm just we, seeing a, we, a we could, we could here. here. Yeah. Mary, we could stay here and solve all the problems tonight, you know. We could, we could. Yeah, it is getting late. We probably should all. So, um, <laughs> no, just... I said it in uh, uh, very positively because because this is this is awesome conversation. Uh, we need to have more of these conversations. Um, you know. Okay. Um, if you can schedule education policy means for after bedtime reading, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> more good. available. Very good. Um, we, well, there's a board meeting tomorrow night and I guess yep. maybe after that, Navid, we can figure out what, uh, what, how, what our next step is. Um, I, I had posted something in the chat, uh, or a little bit earlier that, we definitely stay committed to helping the district and moving things forward. There's a lot that's going to happen. Um, June, July, new leadership comes in. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some new ideas, some new planning. So we'll be helping with that. But then I also think, although I know nothing's really happening major um, in terms of legislation this year, I think it's important for us to mobilize the energy um, that came out during this campaign that really wants to see this system work better for everybody. Um, so I guess we we um, we just have to kind of set up a schedule and make a plan and and take it forward. But there's there's a lot of great people. I, I think the most exciting thing about this referendum campaign is all the, no, the all the amazing people who've come out and that we've connected with and. Um, 68% voted in support of this district moving in the direction it said it wants to go. So I, I that's just super exciting. But um, where are we down to? Well, we've lost most, we still have 36 people, but um, everybody probably wants to go to bed if they're going to be able to sleep, if they're not too excited, they're going to have to find some way, maybe a good bedtime story. We can get Senator Townsend on that. He's got lots of practice. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the portfolio of of like Dr. Seuss and other voices I do nowadays. I bet, I bet. So, um, yeah, maybe, so we should wrap this up for tonight, but um, Naveen, I'm so glad we last minute kind of decided to do this uh, watch party because it's turned out to be a really great opportunity to have a lot of discussion and raise some questions and um, just keep the work going forward because we all definitely care about education. For all absolutely yeah okay so With congratulations that. christina and everybody who worked hard on this we are so excited so excited. Thank, thank you very thank very you. much everybody who joined in as well and, yeah. who and thank involved, you uh, all the way through uh keely powell is here uh do we want to hear from her for a moment keely sure yeah. sure i mean I, I can make a comment i've been watching the entire thing um, I want to thank everyone who came out because it looks like this might have been a definitely a record turnout. It seems that way. I'd have to check the records um, during a global pandemic. And I know I've been on the board under two years. And I just want to remind everyone who's been listening this evening, you have a lot of new board members. When we start August 1st, 
you only have one person who's not in their first term. So we've had a lot of change. Uh, we've had a difficult time with change. We have not always had people support when we've made difficult decisions. There are so many amazing people in our community and within our district who have really given up so much of their time in the last 90 days or so to make this happen. Um, and as I, I spoke to the president of our district and I'm the vice president, Meredith, and uh, he's the president of the school board, uh, he and I were speaking, we said, we've had a year's worth of board meetings since COVID-19 started. Mm. A year. So most boards in the state of Delaware wouldn't have met as many times as we've met in the last 100 days. So there's been a lot of time put in and I just appreciate um, the people in the district who have, who have made this happen. And oh my goodness, the families, the families and the people who came out and made infographics. I know I, I cut, on Sunday afternoon, I came out and someone had slipped something into my door. Thank you, because that's why this happened. And this is what the change that I wanted to see when I ran for the board in 2018. And I'm so happy to see us hitting this high note less than two years into my five-year term as a board member. And I'll also remember, remind every legislator on this call because you've heard from me before, I don't approve of the system that we have for funding schools in the state of Delaware. And I'm so happy we won tonight, but we were playing a very difficult game to win during a global pandemic. And I'm glad it happened. But every time we talk, I'm going to be asking you to look at ways that you can help improve the way that we fund schools in Delaware, because school funding is a social justice and civil rights issue. And since that's on the front of everybody's mind, I want to thank them for their support. But I want to talk about ways that we can rebuild the system that we've been using, because it's tough. And there's a lot of pressure on community volunteers, including school board members and parents, to make it work. But I think we could work together better and serve our children better. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Keely. Any final words from anyone else before we close off this evening? Okay. Well, thank you Give very much, tomorrow. everyone. Okay. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Everybody. Tomorrow night. Tune in to the board tomorrow meeting. Night. Seven o'clock, right? Yep, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Okay. Right here in your living room. <laughs> seven o'clock on Zoom. See you there. Okay. See you there tomorrow. Take okay. Care. Bring Good your night, champagne. Everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.